In this edition of the Samson Quarterly, we're discussing chafe protection with Samson's Director of Sales for the Commercial Marine Division, Terry Crump. We've asked the sales team for the questions they're most often asked by customers when on site for installations, training, or inspections. Terry, let's start with the most general question posed by the sales team, and one often heard. If your rope is so good, why should I need chafe gear in the first place? It's just additional weight and cost. Yeah, good question. We, as you know, we make rope out of synthetics and uh, nylon, polyester, the, and their high tenacity uh, HMPE dynemas. And uh, generally speaking, the biggest failure method of, of any uh, synthetic rope is abrasion. So abrasion uh, with the surface conditions on your vessel or, the, or your rig, whatever, whatever you're working, doesn't matter if it's on land or it's at sea, it's coming in contact with something, whether it be wood or metal, and it needs to be smooth, ideally, and, uh, and you can't always predict that it's going to be smooth, so chafe protection really, really prevents uh, any premature failures and gives you a longer service life, ultimately a, a better value and a lower cost of ownership. Here's a question from a push boat operator. We run pushers on the river and have numerous areas where the face and wing wires will encounter metal chocks, bits, and different hardware. At what point do I need chafe gear? Is it common to protect the entire rope? It's common to protect those points of contact where it's going to come in contact with the metal, the bits, the bollards. It's going to have, if it's being tied off. Um, it, but uh, we do have several examples of multiple types of chafe. Some of our customers take uh, polyester and actually coat it with a paint and make a like a tube, uh, and uh, the rope deploys through there and go and bends around those contact points. We also make several different type of products that would go. So yeah, any point it's going to come in contact with the metal and it uh, bent or it could potentially abrade under use, uh, bend back and forth. Uh, it's a good point. Uh, good example to use as much shape as possible. On a push boat, are those points pretty much set? They, uh, when, they, when they hip up to the, the barge and the vessel gets secure, um, they can determine where to place that chafe. And so they'll generally have the chafe goes around those points and it'll extend down several meters, feet on either side. So if there is any movement, it's going to protect that rope. In a lot of cases, the rope will move inside that chafe protection as well and uh, mitigate any type of, of contact with metal and uh, any heat buildup. Here's the next question. Do you need chafe protection with jacketed rope? That's a good question. Uh, jacketed ropes traditionally uh, in, a, in a class one or nylon or polyester, the, uh, the, the jacket and the core work together to give you your strength member. In high performance ropes, the jacket is basically protecting the the, uh, the strength member, which is the core. And we recommend if any point, just like we talked about previously, is if you're gonna have um, contact with metal going through a chocks, even though it's jacketed and that strength member is protected, to protect it so that you don't get down to that strength member. So basically you're just protecting the protector. So it's a double protection. You've got a chafe, you got the jacket, which is protecting the strength member, and you got the strength member. If you start tearing that jacket due to abrasion and not putting chafe in, then potentially you're exposing your strength member to some damage. Which is better, fixed chafe gear or movable? Um, well, it depends on the application. Uh, if you look at some of our tug ropes, um, they uh, don't know exactly where they're going to make contact with the vessel that they're doing the assist with. So it's not uh, uncommon for us to fix uh, some chafe like a dynaline, something that uh, well, they can, doesn't matter where they're at on that vessel. So if the vessel is real, real tall, or if it's further down in the water level, that, that placement of that chafe protection, it's not uncommon to have maybe 100 feet of chafe or maybe 60 feet of chafe. And hence, when it goes through the, the chalk, of that vessel, they don't have to place anything there. So because the fact of putting a placement on the ship side of things can be dangerous. You got the crew re reaching over and trying to put it in place. Where if you got it fixed, it uh, it's it protects the rope no matter what the application. 
The sliding type, uh, if you've got a mooring rope that is going to deploy back and forth, and uh, with the mooring rope generally they're 200 meters, 220 meters long, and you never know at what height the, wa the ship's going to be in the water column because they're either, with well, the ship, you got to remember, they're taking product to and place, to one place to another place, and then they d d take that product off. So they're going to move up and down in the water column. So the placement of the chafe on it is very common to have a slide type so that the rope can deploy down and just slide through the chafe protection that providing the, the protection move it. The, the crew can move it or in many cases it'll slide on its own because the like a, for example our amp steel blue is so slippery it just slips on down as they uh, as they adjust those levels here's a typical question from a customer DC guard looks too heavy and dyneline looks too loose and like it'll snag on everything what else do you have? <laughs> well, there is a misnomer that DC guard is too heavy. This is an example of DC guard. It's a woven dyneema that's very, very dense, uh, but it is light. As you know, it's one seventh the, the uh, weight of uh, steel, but a tremendous protector. Uh, it's the most cut resistant fiber there is, and it really provides the ultimate protection. So it's a misnomer that it's real heavy just because it looks heavy. It's actually pretty light. In the case of some of these mooring lines, uh, we, we feel that the new DC moor guard uh, with the uh, with the new connections that we put on here so that you can put your tagline on with any type of small diameter to protect the crew if you want to have a breakaway with a small diameter of like polypropylene or manila and your line deploys through it very easily and ultimate protection. And the dynaline, of course, is a woven product that looks real snaggy, but we find that after the customer uses it and that line gets deployed and the construction elongation, which is 4%, gets taken out, it actually lays down and becomes an integral part of the rope. We've actually had compliments from captains saying, you know, thank you for putting that dynaline on. It's really performed well. But we have other options. We've got, you know, good, better, best in our options. We have, uh, you know, kind of a Velcro type of uh, uh, this, this material is uh, nylon or polyester. Uh, and we also have some uh, inverted fire hose. And then we have this, which is a, uh, a woven HMP. It's very, uh, very lightweight, easy to put on. It also has hook and loop uh, grommets on the corners. Generally, the standard length is 10 feet, as with a lot of our shape protectors. We also have VC guard. The VC guard has been spliced and inserted over the eye, and we have a new method of securing it that minimizes the volume in that splice area. So you can see here, where in some cases we have a larger size DC guard over the eye area, uh, we've actually milked it on down and have a very smooth, nice finish. Uh, and this will give you a tremendous amount of protection. So this and the, this rope here and this one here are virtually the same ropes. This has a DC guard over the top of it. This is made of Dyneema, very cut resistant, the most cut resistant fiber there is, and uh, very good protection. So it takes out the baggy factor people worry about. Yeah. So they've uh, learned how to... Uh, to minimize that bagginess over the splice area. And this is a direct berry splice on the Amsteel Blue, and they tuck it on here. Now this can be secured using this same type of concept at both ends. If it was a long piece of rope and you just wanted to attach this DC guard in a particular area where you know it's gonna come in contact with metal and cause some damage to the uh, to your main strength line. Now this, this is Dyneema with a melting point of uh, north of 150 degrees. This would also can be uh, installed using a polyester fiber that has a high, higher melting point and costs less money. Um, and that is called PC guard, polyester cover versus DC, which is Dyneema cover. And we also make this product here, which as you know, is the Dynaline pipe. We also make it in Technora, which is called Technoline. And it, Technoline or Technora has a much higher melting point. So if heat mitigation is an issue or your mooring line or your working line is going to be going over a hot surface, this in a, uh, a uh, Technoline would be a good option for you. Go ahead. Uh, it gets down to your budget and uh, kind of the application. So if you uh, give us a call, we can talk to you or have our crews look at it. We can 
give you the best product for the application and your budget. Here's the next question. Can I get Saturn Dynaline in a different color? Saturn Dynaline, uh, we offer it in orange or orange, whichever one you want. So uh, it's this proprietary product that we developed with a coating manufacturer. And uh, when we finally got it down to, we got the performance we wanted. And because it has to be mixed up at the uh, factory where the, uh, it's made, uh, and it has to maintain that, uh, that basically uh, solution and uh, the level of mixing that they do, we had to pick a color. And we picked orange because it's a safe color and it's universally uh, approved as safety. And so that is what it is, orange. Here's a couple of questions on the same subject. My company is very concerned with safety. My questions concern positioning DC more guard in the ship's Panama or closed chocks. What's the safest way to position it? Well, on the, the, pan, on the uh, DC more guard, we put uh, little tag lines on the end. And so they're on both ends. This is generally three meters or 10 feet long. And you put this line on it, the line, the, the rope, the Amsteel Blue deploys through it. So just before the, uh, as you're deploying the rope, you would tie this off and let the uh, Amsteel Blue slide uh, uh, down through it, down to the chalk. And as the winch is tightening up, making sure that this is positioned somewhere in the center. And by using the tag line, the crew doesn't have to get his hands down there. He can hold it off and allow this line to slide back and forth because they're very slippery. And the way this was designed, the actual pick angles inside this are slippery as well. They're running longitudinally down it. So this positioning is with much safer using the DC more guard and just holding on to this. The second question also concerns chalks. Our tankers are using HMPE mooring lines on roller chocks. I'd like to protect the mooring lines at the rusty, not well-maintained chocks. What do you recommend? I recommend that you surface those and keep them smooth. Ideally, they should roll or turn freely uh, and use chafe protection, and we think that's the best way to go. And if you have a surface comparator, the, the ideal condition of those roller chocks should be 300 micro inch or better. Now, these are pretty common. They come in a stainless steel like this, or they come in plastic. So if you have uh, trouble getting these, uh, we, can, uh, we can help you get them. If not, they can be... Uh, Basically, when you go into your shipyard, they are, they're familiar with surface conditions, so ask for 300 micro-inch or smoother. And that gives you an actual standard to measure that by. Exactly. And this is a pretty common tool to use even in crew training. If you go into the crew and you say, okay, guys, we want to have it 300 micro-inch or smoother, and if your chocks are is this rough, it's going to cause some damage. So we've seen actual vessels who've experienced some damage to their mooring lines not being happy, and we go there and find out that we'd ask them to recondition their chocks and to make sure that they were smooth, and somewhere along the way they, they were not done so. And so going forward, when they were at sea, the crew actually went out and and maintain them. It doesn't necessarily have to have a coat of paint, it just has to be smooth. Ultimately, it would need to be painted. Ideally, to keep the rust away. To keep it from rusting. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And the last question on chalks. What is the best chafe protection to use in the different types of chalks? And what's the best way to keep it in position? Uh, the DC Morgard we feel is the best. We've done the most testing on it, the most development. It uh, is designed to slide back and forth. Uh, once you get it in place, uh, the rope, uh, like the Amsteel Blue, for example, deploys easily. The little tag lines uh, being attached uh, to however you're going to tie it off uh, gives you the best protection. And as we had indicated earlier with the uh, roller chocks, uh, you've got to be a little bit careful when you get down to acute angles, especially if it's not rolling properly. There's a pinch point down there. So not only do you look at it from the inboard side, but get, you have to look out over the edge of the vessel and see if there's any damage being caused to your mooring lines by those chocks. But we feel the DC mooring guard gives you the best protection. Thanks, Terry. For more information on shape protection for high-performance ropes, Visit the Samson website at www.samsonrope.com. There you'll find full product specifications for all the products we've discussed, along with technical bulletins and papers, splicing instructions, and helpful videos ready for downloading.